internet, if you read the title of this video, then you likely already know what's going on. Today I am going through every outfit worn by Loxana Troy. A daughter of the fifth house, holder of the sacred chalice of Reeks, heir to the holy rings of Betazad. Played, of course, by Majel Barrett. Oh, wait! From worst to best, these are the tiers. Actually terrible. Has potential but looks bad. Don't hate it but don't love it. Has potential. Love it. Literal perfection. And somehow even better. Loxana Troy is in a total of nine episodes, six in The Next Generation, and three in Deep Space Nine, so I'll go through each one chronologically. Loxana first appears in the season one episode, Haven. She has two outfits, the first of which is this orange dress. It's kind of sloppy. I don't really like the silhouette. It's just sort of like a, a sh straight up and down. It, it kind of makes her look like, like an orange glittery crayon. So I'll put it in, it has potential, but looks bad. The other thing she wears in the same episode is this zigzag sunset-ish dress. It has very elegant draping. I Bonus points for this little plant thing. I love it. I love that it's backless. I love the colors and the zigzags. I'm putting it in. I love it. Next is this purple dress, which is going straight to literal perfection. She looks like a queen, and it reminds me of a few different Barbies I had as a kid. It does look gray in this one shot, I'm not really sure why, but it's very regal. I love the chains, like the, the chains and the purple and the, the glitter. It's beautiful and it's perfection. Next up is her trying to seduce Picard dress. It has a low neckline and it's darker in color with some nice plant designs. I really like her hairstyle, but I don't like the neckline, so I'll put it in has potential. And here is one of my absolute favorites, somehow even better than literal perfection. It reminds me of that shiny confetti that was always all over the floor of the art classroom at my elementary school. I love the frills, I love the shoulder cuts, I love the silhouette. I love that the fabric is double-sided so you have this beautiful plant design on the other side of the, the shiny multicolored fabric. And she's wearing this amazing navy slip so that the back of her dress has more of a train. It's another backless dress, which I think is stunning. It's going in the top tier. This next one looks like Dame Devon's dress from Barbie Princess Charm School, but in this shiny violet fabric. I'll put it in don't love it, but don't hate it. I do love how fluffy it is, though. For her first third season outfit, Loaxana has this zebra print glitter dress with a voluminous skirt. I love the skirt. I don't really love the bodice, mostly because I don't really like animal print. I mean, even though it's like all glitter anyway but it doesn't really look comfortable. Do have to give her points for like that very ambitious chest window. That's pretty incredible. This look is iconic. I love the silhouette and the belt brooch thing is amazing. So it's going in, I love it. I also just noticed here that she has really colorful eyeshadow, which kind of counterbalances the more neutral tones in her outfit. This one is just so delightfully maximalist. This dress is the gold standard for my inner six-year-old. The ribbons, the pink, the flowers, the beads. It's so fun, and the only reason it's not beyond perfection is the awkward and uncomfortable looking neckline. But overall, it's gorgeous. I love the variety of decorations that she is adorned with, and I love that there are even ribbons and flowers in her hair. This picture also, you can kind of see more of the structure of the bodice. Next is her peacock dress given to her by the Ferengi that kidnapped her and Troy and Riker, so... And she actually doesn't think it looks good. It's green, it's shiny, it's sparkly, draping and flowy sleeves, it's gorgeous, and it is part of the iconic scene where Picard is quoting Shakespeare, so for that it's going in literal perfection. Turquoise velvet isn't easy to pull off, but Luoxana does it very well. I also love the asymmetrical silver bit, and bonus points for this lovely sash. Also important to note, the brightness of her outfit starts to reflect how she feels in this episode, and this does come up again. But in this episode, Loxana falls in love with a guy who is going to die, and her outfits become a little bit more subdued. For example, the next thing she wears is this sort of maroon purpley dress with only a little bit of shiny. It's gorgeous, and it communicates emotion. I love it. The same dress also comes back at the end of Luoxana's last episode in TNG, where she and Deanna are grieving the loss of Deanna's older sister, Kestra, who she never got to know. Next is this beautiful brown dress, very autumnal. 
I love the shoulder ruffles. I love the silhouette. It's amazing. The earrings look really fun. And she has another one of those belt brooches, which I think is cool. This outfit is still eccentric, but it's less colorful because she's sad about losing this guy. And it's beyond perfection. Also, she wears this velvet coat with it, which is really cool. This next one gets an automatic bonus point for reminding me of my childhood Christmas lights with the, just the colors that she has on her necklace and earrings. I don't know what this overcoat thing is and I don't really like it, so I'll say this look has potential. I hate this one, even if it's just because she looks like Bette Midler in Hocus Pocus. And it's extra annoying to me because this episode came out almost a year and a half before Hocus Pocus. Overall, the look is very Luxana. Her outfits in this episode again reflect how she's feeling because she's going to marry this conservative guy that doesn't really appreciate her, all of her extravagance. But I can't get past the Hocus Pocus thing, so it's going in actually awful. Next is her wedding dress for when she's supposed to marry Campio. She looks like a fake astronaut, and the white hair really ages her. It is effective in showing that she won't be happy conforming in this marriage, um, but I don't love it and I don't hate it. This next one I call her Thanksgiving dress. It's very autumnal. It's walking a very fine line between ugly and incredibly gorgeous, but ultimately it's beyond perfection because it is the epitome of Luoxana core. I love the geometric mesh that's sort of the top, and then the, like the boxy overdress with like a weird folding skirt. It's a really interesting design. I think this is the return of the brown dress, just with different accoutrements. I love the necklace and the silhouette. And it technically isn't the same dress because it doesn't have the shoulder ruffles, so I'm putting it in literal perfection. This is another good example of her clothes being less colorful when she's in distress. In this episode, she's struggling with a traumatic blocked memory. This next one further cements her psychological distress. She looks like she's in mourning, and it is appropriate. It's elegant but sad. I'm putting it in literal perfection. Entering Deep Space Nine, starting off not very strong. This one's pretty ugly, but I do like the colors enough to put it in potential but looks bad, and the colors again are reminding me of the Christmas lights. But in general, I just, I don't think it suits her very well. Like, the the colorful bits just sort of look clumpy and weird, and, and none of it really shines as much as it should because of the dark Deep Space Nine lighting. This is the only other one I'm going to put in actually terrible, and honestly, it's mostly the hair. It's like 50% Karen and 50% mullet. Not even the elegant leaf pattern on the sleeves can save this one. This next one is the first of her five maternity dresses. This one is a little boring, but the color and structure are nice, so I'll put it in has potential. This one is pretty boring. It's almost the same as the one before, but in like this olive oil green color. So I don't love it, but I don't hate it. This one I call her carrot dress because it's green and orange. I like this little braid in her hair, and the necklace is fun, so it has potential. This is from when she has to marry Odo so that she can have custody of her unborn child. The only reason this one isn't in Actually Terrible is because I think the veil is pretty cool. It has potential, but looks bad. This is her last maternity dress, and I actually love it. She's back to her usual neckline, and the colors are pretty close to what Odo wears, and this is after the marriage. It's got an interesting variation in fabric as well. We're back to her non-maternity outfits for these last two. This one has got to be the most boring thing she's ever worn. It's like a red-orange version of that teal jumper that Deanna wears sometimes. It's super dull, so it has potential but looks bad. Last is this gorgeous blue outfit. We don't really get to see the skirt very clearly, but it looks sparkly. And the top is so gorgeous, it's going in. I love it. Thanks so much for watching, and leave a comment on what your favorite outfit was.